Hey there, internet friends. Welcome to another episode of That Nerdy Site Show, a weekly podcast where the team members from That Nerdy Site get together to talk about our lives and all of the nerdy things we love about them. I'm your host, Trevor Starkey, and joining me for this Patreon early access monthly episode, we have Jazz Foster making a triumphant return to any of our video and audio content. Actually, this might Yay! be the very first video thing you've ever done with us since uh, since we we, I mean, we kicked off video stuff about a year ago, but um, it's I, that was, you know, in the throes of a pandemic. <laughs> and yeah. there were lots of other priorities. Um, but it is great to have you back on. Uh, how are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's a weird time for sure, but I'm better than I have been in a while and I'm happy to be back. That's great. So. Um, in in your absence from the video stuff, uh, we've it's come up every now and then. But like your your uh, your article on NHL mascots has just continues to be like a, a best clicker on our site. Incredible! Um, so love it. so well done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I love I love just I, logging in, being like, oh, we got like thirty hits, you know, yesterday, and they're pretty much all just Google searches for <laughs> best NHL mascots and finding your article. <laughs> Nice. I've been eagerly awaiting because hockey preseason has started. I'm so glad you brought up hockey. And um, so the season's like just around the corner and Seattle Kraken, they have a team now. They've started playing. They still don't have a mascot. And I'm like waiting Mm. to update that article. (laughs) As soon as it drops, I'm like, oh, bring it on. There we go. So that'll be, that'll be fun. I, yeah. I wonder what that would look like if they will go full, like, Hey, we're just going to do a tentacle man. <laughs> um, it, it really has legs to either be a Cthulian nightmare. Cause gritty was the last mascot to be created. And yeah. he's obviously a horror show. Mm-hmm. Um, or just like a, a sea monster on top of a human body. I think it's really up in the air. Or they'll just go completely like, like, I mean, Having lived in in Phoenix my whole life, like we have the Phoenix <laughs> Suns, and they have a gorilla for their basketball mascot. Oh, no, that's true. Um, yeah, they could go weird with it. Or uh, or the Arizona Diamondbacks have a bobcat because the park was named was Bank One Ball Park for Bob. So it's like, yeah, hmm. maybe they'll just go completely, and it like maybe instead of a kraken, they'll just do a pirate, and it'll be like a pirate instead of the krakens or something like that. Who knows? Maybe. But yeah, it'd be uh, fun to see when that uh, when that article gets uh, updated. Where <laughs> said Kraken falls in your hierarchy of NHL mascots? Um, so yeah, a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the main topic of the show today. And for each of the uh, these kind of uh, monthly episodes, rather than do like a, just a, a catch all of like what we've been playing or watching and stuff like that, we typically dive into a a specified topic. And to this month's topic is going to be kind of some of our favorite Halloween costumes of years past. Um, you know, in fitting for the season. But uh, before we dive into that, a little bit of housekeeping. If you like what you hear, please remember to like, subscribe, rate, review, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. And if you're feeling generous and aren't already supporting us on Patreon, you can do that over at patreon.com slash that nerdy site, just like our wonderful Patreon producers do, Pam Larson, Sherry Starkey, and Teresa Wilkinson. Thank you to them for uh, kind of helping pay the bills every month. Uh, if you don't support us over on Patreon, uh, you'll get access to episodes like this one a month after the fact, uh, and that is that is great as well. We hope you enjoy whenever you listen to these fun little one-offs. Um, so yeah, Halloween costumes. Uh, I, I, as I was telling Jazz before we started recording, I just kind of pitched this as an idea for like, you know, we, I think... You know, we probably did like favorite Halloween memories last year for one of these uh, types of episodes or something like that. Or actually, it might have been like just talking about like the first year of that nerdy site because our anniversary will be November 1st. I believe um, it was. Uh, so, yeah, that, that might have just been what, what we did last time. But this time in fitting for the season, I was like, let's do Halloween costumes. Sure. Um, so I will, I'll throw it to you first. If you have any favorite Halloween costumes that you, that like immediately jumped to your mind is like, oh, I really killed it when I did this in, in some year jazz, man. So I, in terms of like when I looked really good, uh, I, I will say this is the best I've ever looked in my life. Um, which kind of sounds like a brag and it is a little bit, but like I was a <laughs> goblin for a really long time. All right. So my most recent costumes are the ones I'm most proud of because I am more put together. Okay. Like as a person, I look better and I'm a little more fashion forward than I have ever been. Fair. Are you um, are you like a you do a sexy thing of a thing or whatever or 
Uh, it depends. Okay. <laughs> um, mm. Last year, yeah, yeah. Uh, last year, obviously, uh, it was the pandemic, which was so you were a sexy fun. coronavirus. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's been the pandemic for like two years. Yeah, I was. Um, no, I, I have a, I have like a, a small friend group that I kind of like quarantined with right. and like distanced with. Um, I was very lucky to have that, and it, like everybody kind of worked from home, and it, we were all very safe, and so we felt safe with each other. So we hung out for Halloween, and we dressed up as the Scooby Gang nice. uh, at my behest. Of course. I yeah, it's hard to believe, uh, but it was my idea. Uh, <laughs> And I was Velma, and it was so fun, and everyone just nailed it. And I have pictures um, that I will send you if you want them. But, like, it just made me so happy. So that's the happiest I've been with a costume because it meant so much to me. Yeah, of course. That's great. Um, yeah, it was sweet. Uh, the year before that, I was Poison Ivy, and that one was a little sexy. Okay. But so was she. So I was like, you know, I think it yeah. makes sense. And I went out and bought, like, six feet of fake ivy to, like, wrap around myself and, mm. like... <laughs> That was fun. Nice. Um, the coolest costume I've ever had. My mom is a crazy lady. Uh, I, I I echo that with my own mom, and and at least one of the nice. stories I have will be nice. Very mom. I hope we're going driven. down this. <laughs> we're going down the same path. My mom's a crazy lady. Um, and her Halloween costumes. She always like when I was a kid went like balls to the wall. Like she dressed up as Jack Sparrow one year and dyed her hair black, okay. and she was like mid forties at the time. It was just like, did her whole, redid her hair to dress up. But she's really more into like, like concept Halloween costumes, if you will. Okay. So like one year she went as um, mistaken identity and she just stuck name tags all over herself with different names on. Yep. Nice. And she helped me, I believe I was in eighth grade. I had, it was just like a gray sweatsuit. Um, and she, sewed a bunch of thread through it and tied little toys to it. So when I spun around, I was a twister. Okay. And all the toys like stuck out when I spun around. I had like a little tractor and like cows and stuff. I love. That was, that was the best one. <laughs> I love how similar this is to one of the ones I was going to bring up. So uh, like Halloween, like I, I've never been a huge Halloween person, but like when I was a kid, you know, it was the thing you did and you went and got and dressed up. And my my parents, uh, also creative and also very super thrifty. So I remember like one year when I was like, I don't know, four or five or something like that. I was a stuffed dinosaur. And like they actually like they went out and got like a full body dinosaur costume or something like that. And I, we went around and did trick or treating. The next year, my <laughs> mom repurposed that stuffed dinosaur outfit. And used a crap ton of aluminum foil and like a cardboard box. And we like we attached the cardboard box around me with like all sorts of aluminum foil and then threw lots of little toys in next to me. And I was like a dragon toy in a toy chest is is what I was. Oh. So similar, like same same idea of like, let's just throw a bunch of toys in there. And it's a more of a concepty kind of thing. Um, yeah. And uh, and at that same year, it was it was the year of like uh, the 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 stark household uh, Halloween was sponsored by uh, aluminum foil because my sister was a giant Hershey's kiss uh, <laughs> like she, I mean, she's two years younger than me so you know a, a four-year-old kid or whatever as a giant Hershey's kiss uh, but yeah just like fully wrapped in an aluminum foil kind of just the shape my mom kind of just molded the shape of that uh, to, to fit my sister and I and uh, I think I ended up winning like second prize in some kind of like uh, Halloween costume contest at a park or something like that that year. Um, and I just like, I, I remember like that is the costume I remember. Um, and it's probably like one of the earliest costumes I remember. Like, I don't remember trick or treating as the dinosaur, but I remember trick or treating as like the toy chest. Um, sure. And, and only have like the pictures to go off from the dinosaur. And I don't know if I even have, like, I'd have to probably reach out to my mom and be like, Hey, do you have any pictures of this? And like old photo albums or something like that. I'm sure nothing of it is digital. Um, uh, and then like from there, like there was like a number of years where it was just like, I played peewee soccer. So I was a soccer player come Halloween. (laughs) Um, and I would just kind of like go trick or treating in my Jersey and stuff like that. Um, recently, and I'd completely forgotten I did this because like even now, like I'm not, I'm not a Halloween person kind of in like my adult life. I don't like, I don't have a group of friends that I go out and like celebrate or, or do like a costume party stuff with. Um, but a few years ago. Uh, back, uh, I guess it was actually like 2015 with my partner at the time. Um, we were both into Doctor Who and 
she got a TARDIS dress and went as the TARDIS and I went as uh, the fourth doctor. Um, and I had like, I think I actually even have it like near me because I was doing another thing, but I had like the Doctor Who scarf and like that like one. the hat. Yeah, that that doctor. Um, and uh, and I saw that picture when I was like scrolling through, I think, Facebook pictures or something the other day uh, looking for another one. I was like, oh, that's right. That's a thing I did in that like brief relationship I had with that, <laughs> that girl um, that I had almost completely forgotten about. We must have gone to like her friend's Halloween party or something, you know, sure. as, a, as a couple's costume. Um, and I think I, I reused that, the, like, I was like, well, I've kind of got like Doctor Who cosplay. So my work for a number of years, when I worked at uh, the community foundation here in Phoenix, um, they would do, they would go all out with like Halloween stuff, uh, for like a Halloween mm -hmm. party every year. And so like, I got like guilted into doing like Halloween stuff with them. Um, yeah. and the, one of the themes one year was like time and it was like, you know, dress up like your favorite decade or something like that. Um, and so you had a whole bunch of people like in the, you know, doing flapper outfits from the twenties or, or like sixties hippie garb and stuff like that. A, a whole bunch of nineties grunge. And I yeah. subverted it and was like, I'm going to go as the doctor again. <laughs> and just, I sure. like, I am all, why, why pick one decade when you can have all of them? Um, <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I tend to fall on the, the conceptual side in my, like, college to adult life uh, as, as well doing that kind of stuff. Uh, I think the last one I actually did was, like, they did superheroes um, one of my last years there. And uh, because I had, like, the long, like, Jason Momoa-esque hair at the time, I was like, I'll do Aquaman. Um, and I got a cheap, like, full body, like, the the gaudy like orange and green Aquaman suit yeah. like 15 bucks or something like that like way too small uh so like when I when I like put it on uh it did not like connect in the back like it was supposed to and I was like well that's weird and then also it was way more revealing than uh would have been allowed normally at work in terms of like just you know the the nether regions <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up like wearing like swim trunks over <laughs> the uh the outfit <laughs> Um, and and yeah, going as Cute. a a Jason Jason Momoa version of like the crappy Aquaman, um, yeah. uh, in swim trunks. Uh, so those are like some of the the more recent ones. But like I I mean I also did I'm sure like vampires and stuff. You know in in my younger days. Um, another one I think back on in my college years, back when I was a pretentious you know <laughs> dick theater student, um, like. I didn't, I especially when I was doing theater, didn't really love Halloween because I was like, I'm dressing up most of my other days on stage yeah. and stuff. So I don't really care about Halloween, but, you know, theater kids love parties and stuff like that. So um, it, it still became like a routine thing. And so I remember one year I took all of my carpentry gear um, from from working in the scene shops and stuff like that and, and just went as modern day Jesus in quotes. Um, Cause again, I had like, you know, long, long hair, uh, a la the traditional Jesus. Um, and, uh, and so I had like, Oh, you know, it was, I was, I was an action figure of modern day Jesus. And I, I like, I, I joked about having like dual hammer weapons for, for, you know, for when you need to get those pesky nails or something like that. Um, and just being like, it, I, I was just dressed up as a carpenter, but I decided to throw like a, you know, a spin on it for if anybody asked, like, what are you? And I was like, oh, I'm modern day Jesus. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and then I would like dive into a conversation there because that was the most interesting thing about me, I, I decided. So like I look back at that. I'm like, I did not. I, I did not like that and i'm sure like a bunch of people would be very pissed if I, you know uh, but like it was a very sacrilegious kind of theater going crowd anyway so i wasn't really I worried about offending people by doing that um any others that you want to shout out or highlight or any just like i guess halloween memories in general man there this is i don't know that i can fully explain the story because it's been so long i don't really remember the context mm -hmm. but there was one year my cousin and I, this is the only time I've ever had a matching costume with someone. I've, I've never done like a couple's costume. We've never had matching costumes. I guess I did a group costume last year, but that's a little different. My cousin and I both went as, God, like K 
killer Italian pizza robots? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. It was like it was like a story that we told on a car ride to our grandma's house in Maine. And it was like me, my little sister, and my two cousins. And we were trying to entertain my little sister. And we told this whole like long story about these robots who obviously made pizza and then like turned into killers. And it was this whole like very elaborate thing. And we decided that's what we wanted to be for Halloween. And so that was the most uncomfortable costume I've ever worn. And I've worn like heels for costumes and like tights. And that was uh, just a box with like AC vent kind of thing. Oh yeah. Just going out. But like with we picked pizzas. <laughs> I remember we had like pizzas that we were carrying too. <laughs> And like, obviously no one got it because it's not a real thing. It was something we made up in a yeah. story and thought it was funny. And my little sister loved it. So hopefully that, hopefully she remembers that. Hopefully that was worth it for her. Nice. I think that was also the year she got chased by a chihuahua, which is a fond Halloween memory for me. That, I'll say that. that. That would be a, I feel like you could have maybe used the pizza to like, you know, ward <laughs> off the chihuahua at least. Regrettably, they were fake pizzas. Oh, <laughs> they were no. not real. Were they yeah, at least so... like squeaky toy pizzas? It still could work. <laughs> I think it was cardboard. Like yeah. I think there nothing about it was really, it was all like scrapped together. Our moms made them. Yeah. It was very silly. Yeah. I, um, uh, I remembered another one of my like conceptual uh, costumes from the, the community foundation. He's like one of my first years there the theme they went with was like Harry Potter. And so like they just invited everybody to come. This was bef like well before turf stuff and JK Rowling, you know, sucks. I think we all agree now. Um, mm -hmm. But like it was still like they decked out the conference room with like floating candles. So they like they hung little like plastic electric candles from the <laughs> from the ceiling. So you like you walk in and there's just a whole bunch of floating candles there a la the, the Great Hall and stuff. Um and they they had like you know punch with like a fog kind of coming out of it and stuff like that. It was, it was a it, like they went all out on that one. It was like one of the first ones I remember them doing. And I was like, I don't like I'm not gonna go nuts, but I did. I had I think just uh, recently been to uh, um, Universal Studios uh, in in uh, California and gotten myself a Harry Potter wand um, from their their Harry Potter land. Um, and so I was like, well, I can take that. I don't have anything else that's like really Harry Potter ish. Like I'm not going to get a robe and, and do anything for that. Um, so instead I went dressed up as a, like my, my costume was I was an undercover <sighs> Auror pretending to be a muggle, but getting things a little bit wrong. So like <laughs> I had things that weren't matching ties, were, like, like my tie wasn't tied correctly. Like my shirt wasn't tucked in the right way. But then in my jacket pocket, I had my wand ready to like pull out and, and kind of like illustrate, no, I'm, I'm really doing the bit. I'm just taking normal clothes that I have and like getting yeah. more of a story to my costume than an actual costume. Um, but yeah, that was, that was kind of the, like the, like thinking about like Arthur Weasley always getting things a little bit wrong. I was thinking mm -hmm. that kind of idea of like, I'm, I'm trying to blend in with these people. Why are they all looking <laughs> like wizards? This is weird. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that was, that was another one that like I think of in, in my more recent years, I did another, another year that they did. They, um, they picked like Disney, like Disney princes and princesses or whatever, Disney characters for, mm -hmm. um, for a theme. And I ended up like, I wasn't going to try too hard, but I tried a little bit um, and I ended up being sick. So I didn't end up actually getting like I, I wasn't there to uh, to actually, you know, be in costume or whatever. But I I was going to go as Maleficent as like a gender swapped Maleficent. And I got Ooh. the Maleficent horns thing like I, I, <laughs> I bought that, those and was basically going to like show up in um, uh, like in a in a big black robe or something with with those on. Um and uh, and so since I didn't actually end up making it in, I but I still had like the the thing. I was like, I took a picture of myself and like sent it to somebody at work. I was like, really, I was gonna try, I promise. Um, yeah. But they uh, they still gave me crap for it uh, for for you know. Oh, conveniently, Trevor, who doesn't like Halloween, isn't here on ha on the you know the day of the Halloween party. I was like, whatever, sure. guys. I like like yes. I could have just planned and taken the sick day and, and, you know, not done any of this, but I would like, 
here's the proof I was actually going to put in some effort for you guys. Sorry. Um, yeah, they they would often try and do like themed outfits among the teams. Um, and, and I just I like I was never like like I remember for I think it might have been like the 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 decades year or whatever. I think like the finance team all went as like, you know, 60s. And so like the women were like the pink ladies and the guys were like the, you know, greasers and stuff like that. And uh, and I was technically like I like I straddled that team and like my own IT team or whatever. And I was like, I was like, I'm not going to do that guy. <laughs> I'm, I've got like my own idea. If you guys want to do a thing, feel free to do a thing. Um, but yeah, that was, those are, those are like the ones that come to mind. Cause really like I did it in, in elementary school and then we like stopped trick or treating, stopped being a thing. And I just didn't do Halloween stuff for many, many years. And then like college, yeah. I kind of didn't care. Um, and nowadays I kind of don't care. Um, but it was fun for, you know, those little flurries of, of time that we had. Um, any others from your, your, as you said, more goblin days that you wanted to, uh, to give a shout out to or highlight? <laughs> Man, I think, I think I was very generic for most of it. Mm -hmm. I, there were some creative ones, but it was very like the first costume that we have a photo of me in. Cause I don't remember it. Um, I was little Bo Peep. Okay. Uh, I was a detective one year. I mean, I, I also kind of, I, I stopped doing the trick or treating thing in like middle school, which mm -hmm. even then I think was kind of late, yeah. but we just had fun. And then I didn't really do Halloween after that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, even like recently I've dressed up less for Halloween and more for like work events because I've been bartending. So they'll yeah. do like, you know, theme trivia or like um, the brunch place I worked at more recently would do like um, a theme day once a week. Yeah. And that's just a better way to make money. So I always did those. And sometimes I would do like, there was one week at the brunch place that they were like, it's camouflage day. Everybody wear camouflage. And I was a little salty about just the state of the union during a pandemic and how, it, and, you know, it felt like yeah. they didn't care, but they were like trying to raise morale. Yeah. So I dressed up in florals. I was like, you didn't. You didn't specify what we were supposed to be camouflaging into. This is garden <laughs> camouflage. And my bosses were so mad and all my carkers were like, that's so tight. It's like, Thank you guys. Nice. Yeah. I was proud of that. I always appreciate when you kind of like, you know, still, you still be in the assignment, but also be like, fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah. Like, you passed the class, but like begrudgingly. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, there were a lot of those kinds of things in like, Again, just doing theater and stuff, um, you know, going to going to part. I mean, the the most iconic like costume I ever did was from a theater party where <laughs> where uh, it was a Good Friday party. Um, and I I went as Jesus, Jesus, um, where I was just wearing like, you know, uh, uh, like a, a toga, I guess, kind of thing, <laughs> like a loincloth esque toga. Um, and I borrowed quote unquote borrowed um wood from our scene shop and just like drilled screws into it to make it in the form of a cross and just like walked around with a cross the entire night at a good friday party where the the theme for the theater kids was either show up as like a catholic school girl or an altar boy or if you're jewish you can just be jewish and i like, <laughs> i was like well i have again i have the long jesus hair and i was like i was probably 50 pounds lighter at the time. <laughs> so I just, I showed up as, as a shirtless, very skinny Jesus. Um, and, and I have like pictures that like the picture that I had, like as my Facebook profile picture that like I, some of my more Christian friends from like high school, like would comment on and be like, like they would, they would quote like scripture to me or something like that. And it'd be like, you know, blasphemy is going to hell or whatever. <laughs> and I quoted back to them of like, like, uh, like something about, I, I don't remember what the quote back was, but it was something of like, you know, God is forgiveness. So like, what, what do you care? Um, uh, but yeah, the, the picture that I had, um, it's still somewhere in my, in my Facebook album. I'm sure it's, it's the picture I always pointed to is like, this is why I will never be able to run for office. Um, is a picture of me kind of like looking up with like a drink in my hand, 
Um, and my <laughs> one of my Jewish friends, like holding a thing of Manischewitz and just kind of like, you know, also looking up um, and <laughs> and like a couple people were taking a picture at the same time. So somebody's flash is like affecting this picture. And so I have like a heavenly glow slash my white skin is just blinding. <laughs> um, uh, and so, yeah, that was like the oh, this is this is the most sacrilegious thing I've ever done. And the most like costume party ever I like I got really into in my college years. And so that's like the, the real like big kicker that I think about, but it wasn't actually a Halloween party. It was, you know, it was, it was like a, a costume party. Um, but like one of those costume parties that we probably shouldn't have been having, like you don't really want need to be throwing a good Friday party. <laughs> it was just like an excuse for all any, of us to get drunk. I was going to say any excuse is a good excuse. Like, yeah. Yeah, one of the like it was at one of those go to house parties. And and I always joke after the fact um, that like a whole bunch of shit went down that night <laughs> and it was very much like, oh, God got us back. Like that was very much like karma was was really kind of railing <laughs> on some of us that evening based on like just the actions of the night. Um, oh, sure. So, yeah, um, I think those are the the big ones I have. Like I, like I said, I, I remember. One year as a kid doing like vampire and getting like the the makeup and stuff like that and and the fangs. Uh, I think another year I was like a zombie. Like I feel like we wrapped me up in in toilet paper for at least one of those years and just kind of like mm -hmm. <laughs> like I went around the the neighborhood because like that was the other thing. Like trick or treating for me growing up was a bit more of a trick because like I had a I had like a cul de sac, um, but I was like the only kid in that cul de sac, so it was like. I got the five houses in that and then we would have to kind of like walk, you know, the half mile like up and down the other streets, you know, in kind of mm -hmm. around the neighborhood um, mm -hmm. and uh, and do that. And then like we would there were definitely years where it was like, hey, let's go trick or treat over by my friend Luke's house because he lives in a like a more, you know, expensive neighborhood. And it was the like the the stereotypical TV trope of like they give away full size candy bars over there. So let's go to those guys houses or or they do that and they just put the candy out there so you can take as much as you want. Uh, yep. Uh, but yeah, those are those are like my Halloween memories that I, I think back of. And and a lot of it is just like a blur because I just didn't care a ton um sure uh and and yeah i was like i was i was quite content to stop doing it at some point um and then when when people were like no let's do dress up stuff for for like theater or halloween parties i was like ah, i don't really want <laughs> i actually like even as we're just talking about it i i'm realizing the year i did that like zombie jesus thing or not zombie jesus uh, the the like <laughs> modern day jesus like i remember even that was like overshadowed because like a day or two later, like one of our big friends in the theater community, like passed away suddenly. Um, and like I had seen him at that Halloween party. Um, and it was like wow. one of my last memories with, with the guy I had been in a show with him, like a few, like a couple months earlier, he was in a show at the time and basically like collapsed during the bows of the show oh, and just never recovered. And, uh, and so it was like, it was a very surreal thing of like, oh my God, like if I hadn't gone out, which I normally wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, you know, had that last, you know, moment in memory with him. Um, and so even that, like, like that is, it's weird that I, like, I didn't think about that anymore. Like it used to be the first thing I thought about when, when like Halloween would come up because it was his favorite holiday and, and it was, you know, just tragic that he passed away, you know, like I think the day before or something like that a number of years yeah. ago. Um, and it's just, it's, it's one of those like, Oh, time heals, you know, and, and that memory just got further and further from my mind. It's still there and it's still like, you know, clearly pops up, but um, it wasn't the, the first thought I had of, of Halloween anymore. Um, so yeah, that was a weird, a, a weird tangent down that lane. Um, but you know, rest in peace, Scotty. He was a great guy. Uh, we lost him too soon. Um, yeah. Well, that's that's a weird uh, <laughs> a, a, a weird turn. I was not anticipating the uh, yeah, where the, do I? the podcast going. My apologies. Where do we go from there? It's yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know if there is anywhere to go from there. I think we've kind of covered a lot of the the Halloween bases. Um, sure. I do have... have a question for you. Actually. Yeah. yeah. Hit me. I don't know. Maybe this was just a thing because I always trick or treated with my cousins and my sister mm -hmm. every year we went. 
and I don't know if you had this experience, but you had a sister, so maybe you did. Yep. What What were the Halloween candies that you always traded away? Like we would always oh. come home after a long night of walking around and just taking candy from people, strangers. What a weird thing that we do as a culture. Yeah. Um, so, so strange. Very uh, true. But we'd all like dump out our buckets and sort it accordingly. Mm -hmm. And then all the stuff we didn't want, we'd be like, does anybody want this? And I want this. And like, you know, you, it becomes like a weird sort of like back alley deal in the living room. Yeah. What no, was the I, stuff that you got I, rid of? I definitely remember that. I don't, I don't necessarily remember what I got rid of, but I remember always like trying to get like the nerds, the little like boxes of nerds from my sister because I love nerds. Um, Interesting. So like, I can tell you made a whole site about them. <laughs> yes, there, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, that like that is the thing that immediately jumps out. Like, I feel like the stuff we wanted to get rid of, my parents were like gracious and let us trade with them too, and they would just kind of like give ah. us whatever leftover candy they had because again, like we we were not a heavily trafficked um, cul-de-sac, so my parents would would get candy every year for like the couple of kids that would show up. Um, mm -hmm. But then like they would have like a bag of candy or bags of candy left over for us. Um, so it'd be those like those things that were just in the like most generic orange or brown like wrappers, the like taffy <laughs> or something like that. I would I, I was not a taffy person, so I would get rid of taffy um, and uh, and and trade those for like the lollipops or whatever that my my parents had. Um, for, for their given year. So yeah, those are the those are the things I remember like really just trying to get rid of were taffy. Any anything taffy related. Um, <laughs> okay. and then yeah. I think that's really the the thing like like I'm not a I wasn't a huge like mint kind of person, so like occasionally we'd get like peppermints or something like that and I would trade those away to probably my sister too or something, but yeah. I think uh, like a lot of a lot of it would just be <laughs> like there was that trading away element, but then there was also the element of like well, your sister's younger than you, so let's go ahead and like balance out your candy loads and make sure you guys have like an equal share or something like that. So even if I had more candy, like because I, you know, I would I had longer legs and would reach more houses or something like that, or you know, what, whatever the case was, it'd be like, okay, let's let's you know divvy up some of your candy, Trevor, to your sister. Um, uh, so yeah, that's crazy. I, I remember we did that a little bit too. Um, yeah, it was, it was one of those things. Like, I I don't think I think like in like later elementary school and maybe a little bit of middle school because I might have been trick-or-treating a little bit into that as well. I would occasionally go trick-or-treating with like some of my friends um, and like we would kind of hit the same neighborhoods or something like that. Um, I don't think we ever did like trading among among ourselves. It was always just like this. Like it, we were greedy kids at that point. So it was like, this is my candy. You know, like you're, oh, sure. you're on your own. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's I think that's kind of where where a lot of that would come down. But you also just triggered like a memory of like completely not Halloween related, but like my sister and I would do like, we would do this thing where we would set up shops in quotes in like our rooms. Mm -hmm. And like, we would basically like create a barter system of our toys where like, if she <laughs> wanted to like buy one of my toys, like she could like bring it in, like she, she like, I think we had like you know a, a currency even that we created or something using like you know fake money from a from a monopoly set or something like that. But she could come in and like buy my toys and I could go in and like buy her toys from the store and we'd like like that was how we like traded toys just in general. <laughs> it was, and it's just like oh man we were weird kids. <laughs> um, yeah, fun fun little memories like that, but like also things <laughs> I have not thought about in many many years. Um, yeah, good good memories though. Um, what were the what were the things you would trade away? Oh man, um, like almond joys. Mm. I don't want to say old people candy, but like I've never seen a twenty year old eat an almond joy, so maybe it's old people candy. And uh, I don't like I don't like peanut butter, so I'd always trade away Reese's, which was such a hot commodity because everyone yeah. fucking loves Reese's, and I get it. Yeah, just don't like peanut butter that much. Um, so I'd always trade those. I wanted Kit Kats. And a uh, hundred grands, like little, some houses occasionally would have little mini hundred grands. And I love that shit. So right. I always wanted those. Uh, like, um, it seems like we would be very compatible in the trades. Cause yeah, I, I would not want a hundred grand or even like I, Kit Kats were probably a thing I traded away. Um, like I, I enjoy Kit Kats fine. It's, but like, they're not a preferred option. So like, if I could get something else for them, I'd be like, here, you, you take the Kit Kats. I'll take, sure, yeah. I'll take the Reese's. Yeah. 
I also acknowledge that I said old and joy was old people candy. A hundred grand, also old people candy. Oh, yeah, very much so. Super old person candy bar, but it slaps. It's yeah. so good. Mounds. Rice Krispie candy. We love it. Yeah. Was, um, uh, mounds. I was like, I was on the fence about mounds. I just didn't like the almond in the middle of the almond joy. So like coconut and chocolate. I was like, eh, yeah. it's yeah. fine. Uh, Three Musketeers and Toblerones are other ones. Like Three Musketeers, I had to be in like the right mood for. But if yeah. I wasn't, my mom loved those, so I would I could, <laughs> I could trade those to her and get like a premium, you know, a, you know, a Reese's, oh, sure. a, a Reese's two pack or something like that. Um, uh, but yeah, t- like Toblerone is another one that I think of. Of like, I, I've just never been a huge toffee person, so like we would get those, and I'd be like, my dad loved those, so like we'd give them. to My him. dad loves Toblerone. Maybe it's a dad thing. Maybe uh, we we did not get those trick or treating. I don't know where you were trick or treating at. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, like, it was also, I mean, it was a steel cage match, trick or treating. Like, you got your candy. No one ever made me share with my little sister. Like, mm. she has her own candy. You got yours. If she taps out, that's on her. Tiny legs, get over it. Like, yeah. that was her problem. Plus, we and we had a similar situation. You were like, I lived on the corner of the two busiest streets in a small town, but like, still, it was a busy intersection. Mm-hmm. And so I'm pretty sure all the kids in that area went other places to trick or treat. Like we went to my cousin's neighborhood because it was all like small little roads and stuff. So my parents always bought candy for trick or treaters. And I don't know that we ever gave any of it away. Yeah. It was my mom was always hopeful. She was like, maybe someone will come. Ain't nobody. No one's going to trick or treat on this road. It's so dangerous. Yeah. Like, it's so dangerous. I've so, uh, it's, said a lot. It's something weird. Like I, I occasionally think about it, but like it's been so long since I've even like really thought about it. But like I, I've been living for the most part in this studio apartment for like almost 18 years apart from like a very brief hiatus uh, where I, where I moved away. Um, and I don't think like I'm, I'm on the second floor, especially when I moved here, it was very much like a retirement kind of community. Um, and it still largely is, or it's like, it's, it's people's like winter homes um, it, that like live in Michigan or whatever. They, they come out here, they have snowbirds. this place exactly they are snowbirds um and uh and as as like more and more kids have like started living in the like in some of the townhomes and stuff around me like i occasionally think like when halloween comes around oh should i get like a bag of candy in case somebody trick or treats but nobody ever does nobody ever comes up here and if they did i would just be like i don't have anything i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry kids yeah. you're on your own uh yeah uh yeah it's it, cuz i don't even have like a like my, when my parents were like, we don't want to like invite trick or treaters anymore. It was like always the the like turn the porch light off. That's the universal sign that like, hey, we don't have anything yep. for you. Move on, next house. Yep. I yep. can't. I can't do that. I don't have a porch light that I can control. <laughs> like it's it's. T- fortunately, the complex sucks a lot, and so there are a lot of times where just like the lights are out anyway. Um. So nobody comes up here. But yeah, that's one of those things of like, oh yeah, I, like I think. I think like my first year or two here, I bought candy like on the off chance that somebody was going to show up and I'd be like, oh, I can, yeah. you know, like they're already going to be really surprised when it's like, a, a you know, an 18 year old, 19 year old guy in here rather than like a 65 year old grandmother. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, and then, yeah, just nobody ever came. And so I was like, well, I guess I'm just going to enjoy this like <laughs> miscellaneous snack bag of candy. So it, it, it's, yeah. it, it very much it very quickly. And I mean, like it was pretty much from day one, but it was like. In case I have leftovers, I'm going to want to make sure this is stuff that I want to eat or will eat. So mm-hmm. I wasn't out there getting like the variety packs that were that had like that had the mountains and almond joys because I would not have had those either. Um, yep. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't think I've bought candy in probably like a decade for for Halloween. I just kind of like I, I stay in. I'm playing video games like usually on Halloween evenings. And, and that's that's my night. Um, nice. I think I think the kids like, I, I keep to myself enough in this neighborhood that, like, people know not to bother me or, or whatever. I think they also sure. started probably doing, like, a, hey, we're going to do, like, in the, you know, in the picnic area over by the pool in the community area, like, we'll do, like, a, a candy exchange there. And, like, you can do that. Like, I think, yeah. I think they do that every year. But, yeah, it's definitely something I've not, I have not partaken in. It'll be weird enough when, like, I'll just hear all the kids screaming out by the pool and I'll just be like, ah, uh, shut up, you young kids. I'm trying to record a podcast here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we've talked about this because it did make me remember, realize, remember, I don't know, but, like, uh, I just moved into a house after three years of living with Logan. Mm-hmm. Um, no longer roommates. Uh, he's found, like, nine of those ducks, but not all of them, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's, I, I, I like it. I check in with him every now and then. Like, hey, any any updates there? And yeah, he's so cr- he's so cranky about it. I don't bring it up anymore because he's so upset. But uh, I, I live in a house now on a cul-de-sac in like a very residential area. I'm like, damn, I'm gonna have to buy candy, huh? And like turn the light on outside. Yeah. And be I might have to work that night actually. So I'm like, mm, well, I hope nobody shows up. But yeah, this is the first time I've lived like in a real suburban area, and there will be. I like there are kids in the neighborhood. There will be trick or treaters. Yeah, it's also like maybe maybe my memory is just different, but it feels like nowadays, like trick or treating happens a lot earlier in the day. Like I feel like when I was growing up, it was always like a oh we're out at like seven o'clock at night. It's dark out. Whereas like mm-hmm, nowadays, mm-hmm. I will like I'll be driving around on on Halloween or something like that, and I will I will see kids out at like four p.m. or something like that, walking up and down the streets and, and trick or treating all around. Like early. wow, you guys are. You guys are really getting the jump on this, but then like sure. by by nightfall, like like the streets are pretty much empty, and, and like the kids have all gone home at that point. And so like part of me, it, and it is also that weird element of like like when I was growing up, we like our parents joined us for like the first few years, but then they also just let us go for <laughs> for like my parents were not around for many of my years of trick or treating. It was like me and my sister, and like I was like basically babysitting her on on halloween night but i'm like 10 years old and somebody easily could have like kidnapped me on on the road oh sure um and uh and so that's another thing i think i think about in terms of just like how i feel like parents are more inclined to stay with their kids these days and and you know keep an eye on things so that Mm -hmm. you know there are fewer kidnappings on halloween oh sure i know my family would always send one adult with the four kids Mm mm-hmm so, like, there were four adults, four kids kind of thing. They'd send one. And I didn't realize until I was an adult, it's like, the other three adults, like, the person that was trick-or-treating definitely got the short end. Because the other three adults would just, like, get drunk and play card games and, like, hang out. And I guess they gave out candy to trick-or-treaters. Yeah. I can't confirm that because I wasn't there. <laughs> but maybe they did. Uh, yeah. So, like, the one adult that had to go definitely, like, drew the short straw. Yeah. Yeah. Or they or they really loved you guys and and, no, and love seeing the that. joy on your in your eye. Oh, no. Okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely they were they were missing out on the party. But very nice of them to let us go trick or treating, I guess. Yeah. I saw I saw a tweet making the rounds yesterday that was like like beware of like um you know all like beware of houses trying to give out edibles which is definitely not a thing that i had to worry about like when i was a kid but like we always had those like rumors of like razor blades hidden in the candy or something like mm-hmm. that did yeah. your did your parents like do candy checks before you could like dive in no no and i think i mean there there were those rumors but i think they my my parents and my aunt and uncle were fairly confident that their kids weren't idiots which is they shouldn't have been but they were <laughs> and i they just assumed that we would notice if the wrapper was already open and we would be like you know bring it to a parent or not eat it um i don't think we ever had any like weird candy encounters in that regard like so yeah, yeah I, I think they were just confident that like they'll figure it out <laughs> yeah that no one died in in our house that was kind of always wrapped up in the like the the trading or the like the rebalancing of of candy it was like that like my parents were also checking anything that like wasn't a name brand candy or something like that they were trying just keeping an eye out and making sure that there wasn't anything like askew or or stuff like that um but yeah, yeah it's 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 fascinating because like you hear those like you know, old wives tales or something like that every year. And, and the news loves to like latch onto some stories like that every year. And, and seeing that it has evolved into like, um, like, Oh, it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff that looks like, you know, snacks or candy that you would find at a store. Um, but then it has like, you know, um, medication or, or medicated or something like that. It has like, you know, like it's Cheetos, but then it has like the marijuana symbol or something like that. And it's like, sure. What? Um, um, and I like my favorite tweets in reply to this, cause it was like a news lady from like, you know, some, some local station kind of sharing this, this thing out. Um, but pe- people being like, yes, I'm so desperate to give away, uh, marijuana <laughs> that, like, or, or, you know, edibles that I'm going to spend thousands of dollars like buying like specified individualized branding wrapping paper that looks you know close enough to the real thing yeah. for like sweet tarts and Cheetos and and Sour Patch Kids and stuff like that just so I can try and get your kids high <laughs> like yeah that's a real thing that's clearly happening um, 
and, and everybody else was just like, people don't give drugs away. Why do you think that's a thing? Oh, yeah. Like razor blades, it's, sure. That like somehow is more maybe. believable because it's like I'm not I'm not giving away this thing that I would want or use. I'm yeah. I'm trying to harm children. That's you know somehow a believable thing for a sociopath. Whereas like sure. somebody that has access to medicinal edibles or whatever is not going to then give those out to kids just to just like, trying to make your kid <laughs> calm down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, man, the the scare tactics <laughs> that we we that have evolved over the years. That's another fun one with uh, with it's the holiday. It's too the much. Holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, unless you have any other uh, new questions you want to dive down the, the rabbit hole on, uh, I think that we'd probably call it there. Fun, fun conversation. Fun little, you know, light Halloween spirited uh, conversation. Do you ever do the yeah. the the spirit Halloween stuff? What do you mean, like the store? Yeah, like I, I mean, like I remember just those suddenly being like, a, oh, those are everywhere in like those like abandoned s- spots. Oh. <laughs> do you ever like hop into any of those and check out costumes or? Um, not recently, obviously. Yeah, no mean, one's done anything I mean, recently. I mean, yeah, um, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I have definitely have in the past. Um, but they're like party stores to me. They're just like yeah. a spookier party store. So it's mostly like, I really mostly go to the party store. And it's just like when I need something specific. Um, there is a Spirit Halloween. I'm sure there are a few in Austin, but I know there's one that's like, in the same sort of like complex right behind this bar I used to work at that shut down. Cause it will like pop up and then go away and it'll be like something else for nine months or so. And then all of a sudden it's like spirit Halloween again. Yeah. How do y'all keep buying the same property? <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's always the, like the thing, like I just, honestly, I don't even understand how that like business model works of like, they just do so much business during like those couple months of the year where they, they can like, you know, rent a place. And, like also, yeah. How, like, are the landlords that desperate for renters that they will, instead of tying people to a normal like annual lease, they will just say, okay, sure, here, pay us for two months and you can move in on yeah. you know, September 1st and move out November 1st. Cool, fine. Um, Maybe Spirit Halloween is a front for something. Could, Have you thought about that? Could be. Like a, any mattress company or like <laughs> Dippin' Dots probably. <laughs> there you it's go, just yeah. like something evil is happening yeah. in the background. Because it's, it, yeah, it's it's... It's way too shady to be able to, you know, thrive that well. Yeah, I mean, it's just not a fiscally responsible business model. So something else has to be in there. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, very astute. Um, (laughs) Well, I think we can, uh, can, on on that note, on our conspiracy theory spirit Halloween, uh, (laughs) we can uh, can wrap it up. Uh, Thank you for joining me, Jazz. It's been lovely catching up with you and and, uh, and chatting. uh, We'll have to get you on one of the regular shows uh, soon so we can, uh, you know, catch up and and just hear about all your fun new job stuff, about any, uh, I know you in particular love doing the tabletop uh, and the uh, the D&D stuff, so have to get you and Cameron together to nerd out about that kind of stuff again. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you can follow uh, Jazz at Jazz underscore Foster. Anything you want to give a shout out to there, Jazz? Um, I started streaming sort of infrequently. I'm going to try to bring it over to the Nerdy Site uh, channel, although no promises, but I am streaming over at uh, twitch.tv slash Resonim, um, usually once or twice a month, usually Tuesday, Thursdays. Um, mostly like casual puzzle, visual novel kind of games. So we can just chat with the community. Um, that's like kind of been my big project thus far other than job stuff. So Very cool. you can find me there. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can follow me at Trevor J. Starkey. Um, uh, you can go check out all of the let's plays that we do on the, uh, the site, youtube.com slash that nerdy site. I put, put up uh, let's plays every Tuesday and Thursday, um, because I don't have the, uh, the, I just don't have the mentality to do streaming right now. <laughs> so like, I'm like, let's play. I can, I can just sit down and record on my own time. Don't need an audience. I don't have to interact with an audience. I'll still like, you know, interact with the camera and stuff as if there's an audience there. But uh, sure. that's, that has been the, the model I have opted for here with that nerdy site uh, as opposed to the streaming. Cause there were definitely like plans once upon a time to do more streaming on that nerdy <laughs> site. Hence having twitch.tv slash that nerdy site. Uh, yeah. And then just, yeah, everything happened and those plans changed. Um, 
Yeah, you can go check out those uh, those Let's Plays over at youtube.com slash that nerdy site. Follow all of us over at that nerdy site. Uh, like I said, you can go check out Jazz's uh, NHL mascots, uh, you know, rankings um, to, yeah. to just completely continue to bolster our numbers since we <laughs> do, we never put any like actual other writing up on the site anymore. It's, I've it's just ruined the algorithm. <laughs> it, 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 it's just like we, we do the like, hey, here's the here's all the, the announcement posts of the podcast that goes up today or whatever or the, the Let's Plays. Um, it's been a very long time since we've had an actual other like opinion piece or or. Or, uh, review or anything on the on the website but uh you know maybe we'll Someday. maybe we'll try and like boot that back up in year number three here starting uh on november 1st uh who knows yeah. no promises I, I i i tease that knowing full well that like logan would tease something like that and then just immediately flake on it um so you know don't don't actually like rely on that happening but maybe we'll get back in the uh in the writing spirit sometime soon uh, if you liked what you heard, once again, please rate, review, like, subscribe, share the podcast with friends, and maybe even, if you don't already, consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash site, where every patron gets early access to bo- monthly bonus episodes just like this one. Um, uh, and then if you don't support us over there, no problem. We release these episodes a month after the fact um, for everybody. So if you are one of our Patreon supporters and getting this in the month of October, yay! If you're not one of our Patreon supporters and listening to this on Halloween when we put it out there live for everybody, we made it topical for you. Yay! Ooh. Enjoy. <laughs> have have fun. Be safe trick or treating. Uh, and if you do get you know edibles, let us know because that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, thank you again, Jazz, for joining me. Thank you, audience, yeah. for listening. As always, stay nerdy and be good to each other. <laughs>